Grade 4 math number 11, subtracting whole numbers by estimating. I just want to do this really quick. I want you to remember that the big number that you're subtracting from is the minuan, the number you're taking away is the subtrahen, and the answer is called the difference. Okay, I want you to remember that. Okay, we have two mountains. Look at this. That's Cat Mountain, and that's Dog Mountain. Can you see why they're named? That one looks like a cat, and that one kind of looks like a dog, doesn't it? The silhouette, see it? Cat Mountain is 12,226 feet high. Dog Mountain is 15,943 feet high. If we wanted to subtract them by estimation, we'd have to round these two numbers off. Well, because they both have a 1 in the 10 thousandths place, we're going to round off the 1 thousandths place, okay? We round off their heights to the nearest thousand and then subtract cat from dog, okay? So, we're going to round off this five and this two. And the number to the right of it tells it what to do, okay? If it's a five, six, seven, eight, or nine, it says to go up. If it's a zero, one, two, three, or four, it says to stay the same, okay? So, this is a nine, so it's telling the five to go up to a six, and then it's finished doing its job, and it becomes a zero, and so do the other numbers. So there's zeros there. This two is telling this two to stay the same. See? So it becomes a 12,000. See, these three become zeros. If we do the real subtraction, three, take away six, you can't do it. So we have to borrow from this four. It becomes a three, and the three becomes a 13. 13 take away 6 is 7. 3 now take away 2 is 1. 9 take away 2 is 7. 5 take away 2 is 3. And 1 take away 1 is 0. When we do this one, 16,000 minus 12,000, well, the 6 minus the 2 is a 4, and we get 4,000 for a difference. See that? See how we did that? Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to regroup by subtracting, and we're going to do some rounding off and estimating. How do you know which number to round off to? Well, that's very simple. You look at both numbers to decide the place value you're rounding. You use the smaller number, see how 43,000 is smaller than 700,000? You use the smallest number, which would be this one, you use its biggest place value, this place right here, as your rounding off place, okay? We can't round off to the hundred thousands because this one doesn't have hundred thousands. See? So we're going to round off to the ten thousands, which means this number to its right is going to be the one telling it what to do. So remember, five, six, seven, eight, nine says to go up, zero, one, two, three, four says to stay the same, okay? The six tells the three to go up to a four. So now we have 740,000 because the 6 finished its job and turned into 0, so we have 4 zeros. Okay, see, we put a comma there. The 3 is telling the 4 to stay the same. And now it's done with its job. It and the other 3 place values become 0, so you have 4 zeros again. Okay, 740,000 minus 40,000 is 700,000. We just took the 40 away. See it? Now let's do it for real. Can you have 3 and take 7 away? No. So we need to borrow from this tens column. The 4 becomes a 3. The 3 becomes a 13. And 13 take away 7 is 6. 3 take away 3 is 0. Can we have 3 and take 8 away? Nope. So now we got to borrow again, don't we? So, the 6 becomes a 5. It goes down by 1, doesn't it? We give that 1 to this column, and 13 take away 8 is 5. Let's put our comma in. Now, we have 5 take away 3, which is 2, and we have 3 take away 4. Can you have 3 and take away 4? <laughs> nope. So, we're going to borrow it from the 7. It's going to go down by 1 to 6. It's going to give the 1 to the 3, which is now 13. Take away 4 is 9. I'm going to drop the 6 down, and we have 692,506, 
and our rounded off number is 700,000. That's pretty close. That was a pretty close rounding off, wasn't it? All right, let's try this one. What number are we going to round off to? Well, they both have a 1 in the 10 thousandths place. So we're going to have to round off to this digit. And this number is the one that's going to tell it what to do. The 6 tells the 9 to go up. Uh-oh, now what do we do? How can a 9 go up? It can't go up to 10, can it? Yes, it can. If it goes up to 10, it gives 1 to this column, and it becomes a 0 which means now, in our rounding, we have a 2 in this place. The 9 became a 0. The 6 has finished doing its job, so it and all these numbers become 0, so we have three zeros. See how that happened? The 6 told the 9 to go up, so it did to a 10. And it gave the 1 to this column. All right? So now, let's get this off because we have to do real subtraction in a minute. We've got to round this one. The 4 tells the 1, the 4 tells the 1 to stay the same, okay? So the 1 is going to stay the same, so we're going to keep this 11. It's finished doing its job, so it turns in to a 0, and so do these two. So we've got three zeros, all right? So now we can do our subtraction. 0, 0, 0, comma. What does 0 take away 1? Well, you can't do that, but... Can you have 20 and take away 11? What's 20 take away 11? Well, what's 20 take away 10? It's really close, isn't it? So let's start with 11 and count up to 20. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. It's 9. Now let's do our real subtraction, okay? 9 take away 2 is 7. Can you have 5 and take away 7? No. So we're going to have to borrow from this one, aren't we? It becomes a 5. That becomes a 15. 15 take away 7 is 8. 5 take away 4 is 1. We put our comma in. 9 take away 1 is 8. And the 1 and the 1 is 0. So we have 8,187. But our rounded off number was 9,000. Not that close, was it? But it's sort of close. Okay, that's just an estimate, okay? Now, let's do this one. Look, they both have a hundred thousands place, so that's the number we're going to round off to. And the number to its right tells it what to do, okay? So this zero is going to tell the five to stay the same. So we got a five and one, two, three, four, five zeros. Whoops. And one, two, three, four, five zeros. We put our comma in right there. Okay. So now that one's done. Now the eight tells the one to go up to a two. And then it becomes a zero, and so do all these. So we have one, two, three, four, five zeros. Put our comma in. Let's get rid of our messy brown here. Alright, so now let's do our subtraction. 500,000 take away 200,000. 5 take away 2 is 3, isn't it? So that's our estimated answer, 300,000. Now let's do our real one, okay? 4 take away 2 is 2. Can you have 0 and take 5 away? Uh-oh, no you can't. And look, we can't borrow from this column because there's a zero there also. Well, instead of looking at this as a zero and a zero and a seven, I want you to cross these two out, leave this one alone because it's the one that needs help, okay? You cross these two out and look at it as a 70. Look at it as the number 70. See that? 70 take away one is 69. So this whole thing is going to become a 69, and then it's going to give 1 to that column. See how I did that? Then 10 take away 5 is 5. 9 take away 6 is 3. Put our comma in. 6 take away 4 is 2. And then can you have 0 and take 8 away? Nope. So we got to borrow from here. It becomes a 4. That becomes a 10, because it's 1 smaller, and it gave the 1 to that column. 10 take away 8 is 2. And 4 take away 1 is 3. 
So our real answer is 322,352, and our rounded off number is 300,000. So that's kind of close. All right, so if you were counting hundreds of thousands of jelly beans in a jar, it's around 300,000 jelly beans in the jar, okay? So remember, you look at both numbers to decide the place value you're rounding, and you use the smaller number, you use its largest place value, okay? And remember, if the number to its right is a 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, it tells the number to stay the same. If the number to the right is a 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, it means to go up to the next biggest number. It tells the number to go up to the next biggest number. All right? So, here's another thing I want to make sure you remember. Inverse operations undo each other. Addition is the inverse of subtraction, and subtraction is the inverse of addition. We can use the inverse operation to check our answer to see if we got it right. 8 take away 3 is 5. 3 plus 5 is 8. See how it's a fact family? And then we know by adding that we can check to see if we got our subtraction correct. And if the sum, 8, is the same as the minuend, then you know you got it right. Now there's another thing I want to show you. I teach this to a lot of my students. When you're using scratch paper and doing your homework, to make your homework nice and neat, you do it on a fresh clean sheet of paper and you do your work on a scratch paper that you turn sideways. That way you can have all your columns in a nice neat row. One of the biggest mistakes that people make in math is they don't have their columns lined up. And they'll add uh, like this 3,527 plus 618, and they'll go like this. They'll go 3,527 plus 618, and they don't have it lined up correctly. So they're adding the ones to the tens. So the best thing to do is to turn your paper sideways, and you can use the little blue lines, see that, to help you keep your columns straight. Now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this find the missing digit. If you saw this, 6,532 minus 4,100 something 5, how would you know what that number is? Well, actually it's algebra, and it's using the inverse operation. If we have this as the minuend, and we want to take this away and this is the difference, all we have to do is use this again as the minuend and take this one away. If we subtract this difference from the minuend, we end up finding out that the missing number is a 2. See that? Because the subtrahend ends up becoming the difference. So just take this one away from that one and you'll end up with the, a new difference and it tells you what the other one is. See that? See how I did that? I flipped these two around so that this ended up becoming the difference and this ended up becoming the subtrahend and that gave us the answer, see? So that's it. That's how you subtract whole numbers by estimating and that's how you borrow and if you want to borrow from multiple zeros just jump over to the next column and look at it like a 69 from a, you know, from the 70 Take away 1 is a 69, and then you can give that column 1. Or if it said, you know, 8, 0 there, it would become a 79 take away, you know, an 80 take away 1 would be 79, and then you give it to the 1. So look at the two columns together when you're doing zeros, when you're subtracting zeros. Look at the two columns together, okay? So that way, that way when you're borrowing, you don't look at it as a 0, 0, and an 8. You could look at it as a 79 and giving the next column a 1. See? That'll help you when you're borrowing from zeros. I'll see you in the next video. We're going to continue talking about whole, whole numbers, and I'll see you there. Bye!